In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make an eight inch block called Solitaire. So I've drawn out this block in my quilt block notebook. I've designed this quilt block notebook, which I use when I'm planning out the blocks that I'm going to do videos for, and you may find it useful. You can buy it from Amazon, and if you scan this code using your phone, it'll take you straight to the Amazon page for it. Now, let's get quilting. For this, we're going to need four two and a half inch squares in background fabric, one five and three quarter inch square in background fabric, and two three and three quarter inch squares. And in fabric A, you're going to need four three and a quarter inch squares and two three and three quarter inch squares. If you'd like to know the measurements to make a six inch block or a 12 inch block, please pop over to my website, scan the QR code now, and you can purchase a PDF with this information. This block is made up of flying geese and quarter square triangles. So we're going to start by making the flying geese. We're going to make four flying geese and we're going to use the four at a time method. And so for this, we're going to need the five and three quarter inch in background fabric and we're going to need four three and a quarter inch squares in fabric A. We're going to start by drawing a diagonal line on the wrong side of the small squares. So to do this, I start drawing the line in the center to the corner. So then I'm going to place one of these in the top corner and I'm going to place the other one in the bottom corner. And what you want is for this diagonal line that you've drawn to run across the centre of the large square. So I'm going to sew a quarter inch away from that drawn line. Now I'm going to turn around and sew again on the other side of that drawn line. Back at the cutting board, I'm going to remove the pins and then I'm going to cut along that drawn line. And now I'm going to press towards the small dark triangles. I'm going to set the seams and then press towards the small triangles. I 
And now I'm going to pin the other triangle, the other square in the corner. And this time I'm going to make sure that the line comes down through and intersects these two triangles. And then I'm going to take it back to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew either side of that drawn line. cutting mat I'm going to remove the pins and then again I'm going to cut along that drawn line. And now I'm going to press towards the small triangle. Now we need to trim these flying geese down to two and a half by four and a half inches. So to do this, I like to use my ultimate flying geese tool designed by Deb Heatherly for creative grids. And if you do not have one of these rulers, then right click on the link above and it will take you to my video on how to trim flying geese with a standard ruler. As I said, ruler. we're going to be trimming these to two and a half by four and a half inches. And on this ruler, you're going to be following the D lines and that will create, when you've sewn it into your block, a finished size of two by four. So I'm lining the D lines up with the point on the triangle and then I'm going to cut up one side and along the top. Then I'm going to turn the unit round and I'm going to turn the ruler round and again I'm going to line the D lines up with the point on the triangle then I'm going to cut up and across the top. Now you've got a beautifully trimmed flying geese unit. So I'm going to continue with all the others. So we're going to set the flying geese to one side. Now we're going to make the quarter square triangles and for this you're going to need the squares that measure three and three quarter inches. And I'm going to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of the background fabrics. So again I start in the middle and I draw the line out to each corner as this stops the fabric dragging so much. And then we're going to pin them right sides together to fabric A. And at the sewing machine, I'm going to sew quarter inch away from the drawn line on both sides of the drawn line, just like we would for half square triangles. So back at the cutting board, I'm going to remove the pins and then I'm going to cut through the drawn line. And now I'm going to press towards the darker fabric. So 
So I'm going to set the seams and then press. So we've made half square triangles now. And now we're going to draw and now we're going to draw another diagonal line on the wrong side of the fabrics and it's going to in cross over the stitch line. And we're going to do that on just two of the units. Now we're going to place them right sides together. So that's one marked unit and one non-marked unit. And because we've pressed the seams towards the dark fabrics, they're going to nest together. So what you're going to have is a background fabric laying on top of a fabric A and a fabric A laying on top of a background fabric. With those seams nested together, we're going to pin. And then we're going to go back over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch away from that drawn line. Again, we're going to remove the pins and then we're going to cut along that drawn line. And now we're going to set the seams and press them. It doesn't matter which direction you press the seam this time. And now these need to be trimmed. I'm going to show you two ways of trimming these quarter square triangles. The first is with a standard square ruler. They have to be trimmed to two and a half inches square. So this center point here needs to be at two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to lay the diagonal line of the ruler along one of those stitch lines and then the other stitch line needs to intersect halfway along two and a half. And half of two and a half is one and a quarter. So I'm going to lay the diagonal line on the stitch line, and then I'm going to lay this one and a quarter line on the ruler where it intersects. And then I'm going to cut up one side and along the top. And I'm going to rotate the unit and I'm going to repeat. And you should know you're right because now two and a half lines are here and here. I also like to use the Quilt in a Day Triangle Square Up Ruler. Now for this, you fold it back down and you lay the two and a half inch line on the stitch line and then you line the vertical line of the ruler along your other stitch line. 
and then you trim up and down. And there you have your quarter square triangle. So I'm going to repeat that with the others. With all the units trimmed, now need to lay them out in the block layout. And I'm going to start by sewing these four quarter square triangles together in the middle. So I'm going to sew them together in pairs first. So I'm going to return these back to the block layout and then I'm going to press the seams in opposite directions. I'm just going to use this seam roller to do that. And then I'm going to pin these together. So these two um, points need to meet. I do have a video on how to get perfect points so if you right mouse click on the link above it'll take you to that video. I'm just going to pop a pin in these. And then I'm going to take them back over to the sewing machine. going to press that seam. I think I'll probably press this one open. Now I'm going to put all the other pieces back in place. And now I'm going to sew them in columns. Where the flying geese meet the quarter square triangles, you want to make sure that the points match up. So I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. I'm now going to set the seams and return them to the block layout. I'm going to repress these seams and I'm going to press these ones towards the flying geese. And that way the seams will be in opposite directions.
Now I'm going to match the seams and pin them again and then sew with a quarter inch seam. seams and then press those seams open. So congratulations, you have made the solitaire quilt block. Here are some quilt options. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block. There is no sashing or borders, but the use of the white background fabric in the block allows the design and fabrics to stand out. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block placed on point. There is no sashing or borders, but you would need to add blocks in background fabric in between the blocks shown here with the stars and add setting triangles around the edges again shown here with the stars. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block but with sashing, cornerstones and borders. And finally this is an illustration of a sampler quilt using some of the blocks from this quilt block series. The sashing in this quilt is in the white background fabric. The cornerstones and border is in a darker fabric to pop and frame the quilt. Want to learn more? Watch another one of my videos from the quilt block series. Click above to go to my playlist. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. More of these videos will be posted, so please tune in. Thank you for watching and bye for now.